So that's the uh, topic I have chosen for today. And um, I am from Zoho, and I want to talk to you about the art of collaboration. You collaborate with teams, of course, but you also need to collaborate with your customers, and even before that, probably with your prospects too. So I'm going to take you through a, a journey with some anecdotes thrown in, and some products from Zoho that you can use for doing these. Let's get started with collaborating with customers. It's all about tracking customers. It's all about data and uh, accumulating hordes of it and throwing an analysis and algorithms at it and coming up with nice insights. In fact, there is this girl. She's still in high school. And this girl was doing her usual shopping at uh, Target. And then uh, a couple of weeks later, she started receiving coupons for baby dresses, for teddy bears, and so on. And this dad who was at home got angry and uh, came over to the uh, shop and shouted at the guy and said, she's still in high school and you're selling her maternity gowns and coupons for uh, stuff like that. And Target apologized profusely. These were the coupons they started sending. And Target, of course, apologized. But later, that guy called back, the dad. This manager kind of uh, hesitantly picked up the call, worrying, wondering if he's going to shout again. And it was this time, the dad's turn to apologize. He said, things have been going on at home that I didn't know myself. My daughter is pregnant. It seems Target came to know that this girl is pregnant even before the dad was. Dad came to know about it. How? It spotted anomalies in data. Suddenly, this girl was purchasing unusual amounts of supplements. She was showing a predilection to uh, pink and blue, the stereotypical uh, baby stuff. And automatically, Target's algorithm kicked in out of millions of purchase points. It located, OK, let me start sending information about things she'll anyway need. And instead of making her go somewhere else, let's tell her Target has that also. That's what happens with Amazon too. So you must all remember this phrase, you may also like. Right? Never is a time where you go to Amazon, locate the product you want to buy, buy it, and then close the window before seeing at least 15 other products that Amazon thinks you will soon be wanting anyway. Right? Way back when Amazon started in the 90s, way back, they had it already. They had a feature called eyes and editors. They said, give me your contact details and give me the names of authors you like to read. The moment they publish a next book, I'll send you an email. That's how they started. Beautiful but sneaky. They are getting your email address, they are getting your preferences. That continues to happen even today. Your recently viewed items are tracked, featured recommendations are tracked, your browsing history is tracked, what are the products you have seen, what other products you have seen are tracked. If you are friends with other customers in Goodreads, for example, what books they buy and who you follow is tracked. There is a newer version of this item. I got a phone very recently. And then Amazon pumps me in with a mail saying, whatever you bought is obsolete now. Do you want a newer version of it? Right? That's happening. And frequently bought together. If you buy one, if you buy a phone, for example, immediately pops up an ad saying, here is a case. You will need to protect it. It continues. Your shopping cart data, your abandoned carts. If you start shopping in Flipkart, and then for some reason you close the window and go away, Flipkart sends you a mail saying there are two items waiting as if they will go away, as if the offer goes away. There is A-B testing, depending on where you are, whether you are in a city or in a rural region, whether you are in a condominium, a huge flats complex, or living in a private bungalow by yourself, all this data is collated, and the view that you get is uniquely customized just to you. There is bundle testing. Should we sell them one, or should we sell them the whole bundle? There are wish lists that you can create in Amazon. And that wish list, they are tracking what you are hoping you will someday buy. And analysis is run on those algorith uh, algorithms are run on that data, and people punch you with pitches. 
dwell times how long have you been wandering up and down right it happens in typical uh, even in window shopping in malls you keep looking at it you almost go you look at the price tag you close it and come back that activity is re if replicated digitally too people track how long you aimlessly go around in the same page your eyes are tracked your mouse movement is tracked your ratings how you rate it your shipping address your location user segmentation based on demographic psychographics direct marketing click throughs all this are tracked views how many views you view before purchase in fact anybody recognize this complex formula this formula was used by the winners of the netflix recommendation algorithm netflix said i'll pay 1 million dollars for that team which comes up outside team using my apis which comes up with what is the next picture next documentary next movie that this user is likely to watch most based on all that he or she has watched till now this is the algorithm it seems netflix went ahead gave that 1 million dollars to the winners but actually they didn't implement that algorithm because there is a difference between coming up with a great idea and going ahead with the implementation that's what we just saw with target also target pulled back it was too creepy too eerie it crossed the point where it's almost as if somebody is standing behind you and watching what all that you are doing it's not time yet for that so we have to talk, we are talking about technology we have to address the concept of ai we have to talk about machines learning and trying to replicate a digital version of you in their databases so i had to put that in it will come the time of the robots the time of the thinking machines it's coming but we still have quite a way to go because this human pushback is happening now at zoho we have a couple of products there is a, a lot more from where we come but i'll just show you a few aspects uh, in our products where we think we have innovated on how we track customers how we get a holistic view of customers and how we empower you to collaborate with them so crm for example on the right any activity that the customer makes need not even be sending you directly a mail it could even be a twitter or a facebook post that actually gives you an insight into who the customer is you can actually watch it right from inside zoho crm right any activity because it gives you an insight into the customer's mood is this the right time to call them is this the right time to interact with them zia is a ai product that we launched it's actually not a product by itself it's a, a nice little layer that we have layered on top of all of our products and it's a conversational ai where we give it a personality and we also find ways to actually generate wisdom out of all the data that we have been collecting about our customers so this data is not used to help anybody else except those customers themselves that's the difference between companies like what we saw till now and our own for example in this case there is a long mail that has come instead of churning through all those mails you have a nice little sentiment analysis based on language understanding so even before reading that mail you get a feeling that oh it's a happy mail oh it's an unhappy mail let's address the unhappy mail first so this helps you wade through chaos wade through too much content sales inbox is an inbox for sales people usually for the past 45 years perhaps email has been reverse chronological any new mail that comes up will push whatever important mails exist down the screen and once you lose visual in the first screen you usually end up ignoring it completely so what sales inbox does is redefines the way we look at email yes there is reverse chronological even then but you can actually look at it as based on the deal data that we have in crm you can look at it as deals you can look at it as contacts and leads you can choose whether they are in crm or not and you are also looking at internal colleagues so you can also drag and drop them based on somebody promoting from a lead and a prospect to a real customer zoho desk is our omni channel customer service tool so gone are the days when somebody has a problem with your product or your service they will call your 1800 line or they'll send you an email today they go to twitter 
right they post a long rant on facebook that is how customer service is being challenged today so what we have is omni channel be it on social networks be it as chat or as a phone call or as an email we have an integrated holistic singular view of all the incomings based on sla based on your relationship with that particular customer or company you can also sort them and address the more important more valuable ones first moving on to collaborating with prospects those that you want to convert some day into your customers it's all about chasing them understanding their psyche and chasing them so this is active social users by platform so if you look at it twitter instagram are down there fb messenger whatsapp and facebook are way up there why are these instant messaging engines picking up these days you can actually quite easily say right you can say why they are so popular basically they are more natural we are chatting we don't want people taking up our phone line and preventing all others from contacting us we want short messages that's how the whole idea was born fewer ads it's much much rarer to see ads pop up on facebook uh, on facebook messenger or on whatsapp than on the typical social networking websites this which are scattered with ads that you have to search for the real content and it's a lot cheaper most of them have end up becoming free i don't know how, how many of you remember whatsapp started with 50 rupees per year you remember that so now it's free and uh, you are the product the data you are giving it is the product and there are no commitments so if you uh, are receiving a message you know it's not as if you are starting a blog how many of us have started blogs with great energy and enthusiasm but four years later we stopped updating it and it's now the html is broken the images the links we have added on it are all broken so it's often so often happens so often so here you don't have a commitment it's just a short messaging service you're a small little interaction among many others that the customer is actually viewing but there are challenges because most of these are private conversations imagine you chatting or having a whatsapp conversation with somebody and a third party advertisement coming saying looks like you are planning a movie do you want me to sell you a ticket right that's uh, pretty uh, obnoxious so it's harder to advertise in these platforms and there is no like or hearting in a direct uh, chatty interface you can't really uh, like from outside and publish that i like this person's message to me that doesn't work but things are changing and in fact uh, when whatsapp was acquired by facebook this was the terms and conditions you all agreed upon agreed to and there is this line we do not want you to have a spammy experience down there somewhere and interestingly i was in a hotel in um, hyderabad recently and this was the conversation i had so dear guest welcome to siesta i am the hotel help desk using this chat service you can instantly reach out to the hotel management for any query or concern how may i help you by the way you can type wifi to know your room and password to know your username and password It sounded good it was a first high tech experience that i had in a common hotel So by the way I typed wifi I got the room number and the password I was little curious I asked him are you a human and then I asked what is 3 plus 17 that's my trick for checking if it's really intelligent or if it's really a robot uh, uh, reacting to me so 3 hours later no response so that's not useful as I thought then right it was actually an automated pseudo robot that had been set up to just respond to one question called wifi but humans are not single question beings if you really want to create tools that you want you want to position as talk anything it will respond you need to have a plethora of questions and answers there is this thing called the uncanny valley so in realism if you look at visual art for example you don't really have any empathetic response to a, a picture like that yes if your daughter drew it you would really love it and put it up on the fridge or on pinterest but beyond that there is no great empathetic response to it and then there is the simpsons the out of shape uh, structure all in two dimension there is a little emotion you can crack a joke you can talk to or listen to that was snow white 
the first really relatable character with Disney presented us and became a full length movie, a great hit. We still like the emotion. We cried when she was hurt, when she was injured. The Incredibles is still climbing. Yes, because we see a lot more slickness in the action, in the activity, and there's a great storytelling arc. But at this point, something happens. Polar Express was a box office bomb, right? It completely failed. They thought they have invented an amazing way to capture Tom Hanks and bring him into the screen, and soon actors need not act at all. We will have computers that have generated every emotion possible from every actor, and movies can be made for much cheaper. But people were not ready to actually relate. It gets even worse. There's a girl called Cubo Girl. It's a robot. People are afraid to go near and talk to her. She has uh, ability to have an amazing conversation, but they don't want. And it seems, yeah, at the end there is this guy in the US, right? But it seems there is this uncanny valley that you have to pass before you can actually reach out to a human. Because when you get closer and closer and closer, there comes a point when you realize that it is not real, but all your senses, all your gut feels and instincts tell you it is too real. And at that point, Fear and hatred sets in in the human mind. So we are there now. So be careful when you're uh, implementing anything which is AI, which is uh, robotic, which is chatbot. Be very careful because it's easy to fall into this valley. We haven't crossed that yet. But there are companies that are trying to do this. For example, this is a Survey Sparrow. It's a chat-based surveying tool. They have really made it well. And it's a beautiful tool anybody can implement into their product. So look at the question. Thanks for subscribing. Got a moment to share your thoughts? Gladly. What are the top reasons that made you choose us? So easy, pick and choose. Or how did you come to know about us? Easy button tab. Or I'm taking everyone's feedback on company culture. Off the top of your head, how good is our company culture? This is an intranet question. One to 10, tap the number. So all you do is res respond with your thumb. Like what happens in the LinkedIn intelligent chat engine. You must have had a chat on LinkedIn. It's, uh, it predicts what you're going to respond and it gives you easy canned responses. We have a set of tools. Um, Zoho Sites is, uh, we were hearing the previous speaker talk about how many of us can build a website. How many of us go to services and uh, agencies to get them built. So we have a do-it-yourself website which is drag and drop, WYSIWYG, so it's easy to build our uh, website. And not just that, when you build a site with Zoho, website, Zoho Sites, you can easily drag and drop an e-commerce platform onto it, a store onto it, a contact form onto it, or a series of contact forms or forms that are networked with each other. Depending on the previous form's response, you can decide to trigger which form. All of these are with a, with a mouse drag and drop. You don't need to really code. It's a low-code platform. Sales IQ is our live chat engagement platform that you can drag into any website that you own. It's a few lines of code, just like you do Google Analytics. This one is Analytics Live. So it gives you interfaces like this one, for example, where you are the uh, person in the center, you own the interface or the service, and you see people, various pages, how long they have been there, as a person who is a visitor stays for longer, or if he is a return visitor, three days later he, keep, he or she comes back to the website, it gets warmer and you can directly engage. You can right click, start a chat. Even if you don't know the language, somebody coming from Finland, we have a translation engine from Google um, uh, plugged into it so that you can write your response, get the immediate translation and talk to that, talk with that person and sell your product. Zoho Social, because no longer is, uh, is it okay to just have a website, you also need to have a presence in various social networking uh, sites today. Because if you don't have a website, somebody is, some, you don't have a presence on the social networks, somebody is going to create a thefakecompany.com uh, page on uh, Facebook and start trolling you. Right? So you need to have that presence, and you also need to manage it. It's not enough to, it's better to not have a page at all than to have a page that's not managed well. 
And typically, when you have a global presence, there, have, there will be times when you're asleep and still activity is happening around the world. So this Zoho Social is a product where you can create responses, you can queue them up. In fact, you can even smart queue them because based on demography, based on your kinds of users, based on the location you're going to post it, a Thursday evening might be a better time than to post it on a Sunday morning. So we analyze that data based on history and we look at engagement and we recommend the best time to actually post that. Even if you are asleep or away, you can do that. And sometimes there may be tweets that require senior management involvement. So you can actually at mention them, drag them in, they can take a look at it, they can correct or iterate on that post, and then you can finally post it as if you are posting it. Zoho campaigns, we talked about, uh, the previous speaker was telling me, telling us about campaigning, how we run our campaigns. So we have a campaigns tool that is, uh, again, omni-channel and integrated. So you can reach across uh, social platforms, send it by email. You can track opens, clicks. You can also track unsubscribes. You can also track it from your mobile device, wherever you are on the go. Campaigning wisely is going to be important, particularly with GDPR becoming a global standard. They did it, they did it well in Europe, but that's not going to stop there. It's a long journey, and it's almost as if a counter story happening to this world of collect more and more data and make my algorithms intelligent, collect less and less data and retain, let me retain my individuality. So Yuval Noah Harari, the, that great uh, author, who has talked about uh, Homo sapiens and 21 lessons for the 21st century, he's telling us the most important lesson we all need to learn. In fact, get our next generation trained in is knowing yourself. Because for the first time in the history of humankind, there is competition. If you don't spend time to know about yourself, all these companies, Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft, are going to know about you more than you yourself know about you. And typically what happens is it becomes a master-slave relationship. That's a big warning. Collaborating with teams. So to do both those other collaborations, you first need to have a large team. Sometimes it's even across cities, across locations. So you need to collaborate with teams. So it basically empowering them. So there is this uh, beautiful series, documentary series in Netflix. It's called World War II in Color. I strongly recommend you all to watch it. In uh, probably the third episode, they talk about why was it that Germany, with all its amazing power in military, in uh, the army, navy, air force, its huge number of trained personnel, and its charismatic leader, a person who could move the masses just by standing up in the podium and delivering his talk. He changed people's minds. Okay, probably the wrong way, but why was it that such a person could not pull off a simple victory against distinctly weaker opponents? So that's the whole story. Uh, and in that episode, he tells us about how the control room was deep inside a cave between two hills. And to reach there, one had to cross multiple rivers, go on donkey back, and finally reach the man. And he was such a control freak that he wanted to take all the decisions, including the ones about what to do when plan A failed, way out there in the front. Right? So he even shot generals for deciding by themselves to back out of a war, back out of a bar battle, he wanted complete and implicit obedience. Die in the battlefront, but don't come back to me if I haven't called you back. That was the way he drove it. In fact, there was this letter he wrote to his girlfriend. It was unearthed in the 90s, and it has words like these. I am dead scared to be away for a day or only five hours because something might happen. Of course, something will happen. It keeps happening. This is the battle, God damn it. So if I was today to get a root canal infection, I can't leave. I have to be here. I have to take decisions for my team. So that was the central manipulating, controlling, master of all actions kind of mindset this man had. And the documentary says that is the most important reason the whole thing was a debacle. Compare that to this 
cute little unicellular organism. When I say it's unicellular, it doesn't even have a brain, right? Its name is Physarum polycephalum. Physarum is spreading. Polycephalum, poly is multiple, cephala is head. So multiple headed spreading being, that's the name of this bacteria, this slime mold. Doesn't have a brain, no neurons, nothing. So give it a, a maze like this, it seems it can solve this maze. That's amazing. So how does it solve a maze with no brain? It's following a simple algorithm. What it does is it first spreads everywhere. All places I can go to, let me go. It goes. And then once it does that, once it reaches any dead end, it starts backing up. Because I don't have any further growth, let me start backing up. And when it starts backing up, whatever it was, when it dies, it becomes a blue, uh, a slime, a key, icky blue thing. So the only logic that the living mold knows is, if you encounter your own dead body, realize that there is nothing interesting any further in that direction, just get back. And that is the simple logic it uses. That main piece out there, the head or the starting point, has no idea whatever is happening anywhere else. So that is what happens. That is what happens. And finally, you have one single path, which is the single fastest path to reach its destination with no central management. So we know companies like Apple, like Tim Cook drives every damn thing, or probably Steve Jobs did. Companies like Google, where three people head the whole thing. Facebook, where it's all networked and it's about connecting people. But okay, even companies like Microsoft, where they say uh, teams used to fight against each other for uh, priority or whatever. But actually companies like Zoho work like this. I'm sure many of you will silently nod, my own company is actually as chaotic as this. It's not about chaos, it's more about a matrix relationship. A person who is a leader elsewhere is actually a follower in some other team. A person who is a guru in something is actually learning something else in some other team. So it's cross-functional, cross-departmental metrics. So we want to provide tools that will democratize all learning, that will decentralize all decision making. In fact, this is one of the precepts of all agile methodologies. The agile manifesto has this as a line. It says, the best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. Nobody told that tendril of that bacteria to go or stop going. It just did it. It didn't receive information from headquarters or it didn't wait for messages to come from there. That's the most important thing if you want to talk about velocity in your teams. So we have four products. We have many more, I'll just show you four. One is called Team Drive, where you can, it's like Dropbox on steroids, where you also have included a lot of team members. You can set quotas. You can share documents with people with write permission, read permission. You can collaborate on a document, simultaneous edits, you can also set quotas like this. You can have view-only permission, edit permission, and so on. Click is a chat engine, but we have taken it far beyond chat because you can also write a robot, a chat bot that can respond to uh, quick answers. If you're chatting with a customer and you want to know more details about the customer and you don't want to ask that person the same questions again, how often it happens to all of us, they will transfer it to another number and they will ask us, can you tell us the whole story again? 30 years ago, this was a joke, but it happens even today, you're all uh, smiling about it. So we need to make some changes there. So we want to do things like, if you just put a slash command and type the customer's name, a silent pop-up comes up just for you that tells you everything about that customer you need to know. And you can act infinitely wise and interact with that customer. So that's possible with click. So one of them is a customer chat, the other is a, a, chat, a, a chat bot telling us who they are, and then there is a mobile version also available. You can also get and give immediate help because you're also interacting with bots that others or you have written. Connect is our water cooler talk. It's like a, an intranet or like a Facebook for internal small groups in companies where irrespective of who you are, there is a nice little flatlining of the uh, hierarchy and 
even if the CEO is posting a poll, you can actually come in and give your thoughts on it without fear of reprimands or retribution. So you can start a poll, you can ask a question, you can make an announcement, you can set a task, or you can also gather an event like this and announce it there. A beautiful, vibrant intranet that you can run. Mail, the last product that, you want to talk, that I want to talk to you today about, we have taken it far beyond just mail. You have other things like tasks, notes, calendar, automatically built in. But beyond this, what I want to point out is, if you have received a mail from a customer, and you don't really know that particular answer to that question. Typically, in the old world of email, it would be FWD forward to somebody else who is the expert, and that person will recolon FWD colon of our email, and we will receive it. And at least once in your lifetime, you must have done this mistake. You must have written back to that customer while having that old email thread with that internal user visible to that customer. It's a big face loss. So what we have done is we have introduced the social network at mentioning feature. So right way down there, you can just open an at mention. This email is shared securely, privately to any local group or individual member. And that person can respond as if he is responding to Twitter or Facebook. And you get these two little threads, the question you asked and the response you got. And you can derive your answer and type your response and send it out. And that customer will think you know everything you have to know about Zoho. Right? So that is a beautiful social layer we have built on top of it. Done. So we are proud to say that we are made in India and made for the world. We have been around for 22 years. We have four different clouds and as many as 10 plus products in each of them. The customer cloud, the workplace cloud, the operations cloud, and the custom apps cloud. We have 45 million users around the world. We have been around 22 years. 7,000 plus employees spread across the world, mostly situated in Chennai. We have a booth out there. The success of a set of tools depends, some people think, on how well they all work. Each product works. But I would go further and say, it actually depends on how well they work together. Your CRM needs to talk to your project management. Your project management needs to talk to your invoicing tool. That is when it really makes sense because you're not here to juggle multiple products. You are here to optimize your personal process. That's what we provide. And sometimes when we have a single tool in our hand, like a spreadsheet, for example, we try to do everything using that. We need to pick the right tool because unless you pick the right tool, you might end up being shaped by it. Most of the times as you start using that tool, it starts shaping the way you think. Thank you. I just want to share this. Actually, it's uh, probably happening already. Sushant, my colleague, is giving you a live demo of many of the products that uh, I just talked to you about. And we are at P1 right in front. Please come over for a live demo. We also have a cute little virtual reality experience waiting for you there. Thanks a lot.